Hey, hello. Here we are on a very, very pleasant summer evening. It's warm, not hot, warm. There's a very gentle breeze and I am out on the water, uh, or on a pier. I'm not on the water, actually. And around me, you know, there's activity, you know, people here and there. It's nowhere near as crowded as those bad old days or those mad old days. It's, it's very... Um, it's just pleasant, you know, there's lots of space. I'm looking at, uh, to my left, you have the eye promenade. So I'm looking at one, two, three people on inline skates. And um, there's one in particular who has the, oh, just made this sort of jump. Oh, pretty cool. <laughs> That's funny, I didn't plan to say, oh, but it just, they just jumped and it was very surprising. Uh, yeah, what was I going to talk about? I, I, it's not a big subject, but it, I was looking at somebody and he had these gym shoes on or these trainers or whatever, sneakers, and they were just so white. That, like, <laughs> I was looking at them, I, I didn't understand how, how it was possible in a city to have, you know, how do you do that? So I was looking at his shoes and I'm thinking of that. And then, of course, because they're so white, I start wondering, oh, are other people's shoes that clean? So I start looking at people's shoes and it becomes very funny when you start looking at people's shoes because it's not just the shape of the shoe, you see, but it's the, the way that shoe moves or stands. So you have um, this kind of thing that you can look at a shoe, you, you look at, just stare at the ground. I mean, you have to know where you're going, of course. But if you look at the ground, then you see these shoes coming along and you try and figure out who's at the other end of the shoe. And it's a, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's a sensible game, but it is something you can play. And that's what I, I have been playing for the last, uh, I think, hour and a half until I came here to sit. Um, you have... I mean, what can I say? You you have a lot of the same brand. I, I don't want to mention the name brands, but they're like three or four brands that are, they dominate footwear. It's unbelievable. They're just everywhere. And then you have shoes which are just well, their shoes. You have some shoes which are sorry. You have some shoes which are really really nice. They just look. Um, I don't know, they just look good. And I think it has to do with not only the shoe, but also the person wearing them and the way the person moves in those shoes. Because I saw one pair of shoes that, I don't know, but they did seem a bit large because the, the toe, you know, the front part was sticking up into the air. Um, <laughs> I have to laugh because suddenly, I, th I sometimes say this, that I'm talking about something that a part of my head seems to become aware of what the other side is doing and saying why are you talking about shoes well yeah i was looking at shoes so th those are just you know some of the things i mean that's one of the things you can look at i have i always i often look at cyclists uh, it, it depends there's the i somehow seem to be fascinated subconsciously uh, or inadvertently fascinated by cyclists who, who go through red lights and it's not it's not about oh you're wrong I, I'm not busy with that it's just the way their attitude as they go through because you have you just have these various categories of people who run through red lights and you have the ones who are really in a hurry so they just you know zip through and some of this stuff I might have said earlier so I'm sorry but whatever um, you have those ones so that they are sort of valid red cross uh, breakers whatever you want to call it then you have those who, <laughs> I, look, this is of course my interpretation, but you have people who seem to go through the red light and it's as if they want you to see them going through the red light. <laughs> and every once in a while, um, I just, you look, they never get hurt, hopefully. But once in a while, some of them go through a red light and they haven't timed their passage very well. So you hear toot, and then you see this person sort of speeding off, you know, and then um, they never sort of slow down after they sort of speed off and disappear. Uh, as if, um, yeah, in my head, it has to do with feeling a bit embarrassed because they were so cool. Look, I don't stop for red lights, man. I'm really awesome. And then suddenly you find yourself, you know, sprinting for your dear life. So that's, uh, yeah, that's, um, that's the 
cycle one. I mean, there are many things on cycles. I like seeing uh, when you have more than one person on one bicycle. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what I, I and that does not include tandems. I find tandems a strange um, machine. I, I understand what it's trying to do. It's just <laughs> I have never been on a tandem. Uh, once, many, many, many years ago, I was offered a chance to go on a tandem, and I just refused. I couldn't. I have to be honest. It was pride or some silly thing like that. I could not get myself onto a tandem. It just. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, there's no sensible reason it's, it has to do with pride and all that so no tandems for me but I do like seeing uh, multiple people on bicycles I have seen one well they, did, they never actually got anywhere but once you had some boisterous young men and they were trying to get about four of them <laughs> they were trying to get four of them on the bicycle and it, it just wasn't working and I couldn't tell they kept trying but they were laughing, but I don't know. I know they couldn't be serious, but anyway, whatever. Sorry, that's a boat uh, going by. So, um, uh, and my voice is in hazy moods, slightly like the weather in the distance. So I hope um, you heard me above that noise because I'm not going to repeat what, <laughs> what I just said, <laughs> just out of sheer laziness. Uh, so you have uh, the bicycle things from here. Um, my pier, the Pier 14. It's. Well, I don't go there much anymore because it's now becoming busy, so it's very, uh, very hard to have uh, space to yourself. And I find that when I do, when I record a podcast, I, yes, I'm outside, but I don't like being near people uh, while doing it. So um, that's that. So in the meantime, I'm just watching the ferries. Because of the ferries, I've thought a lot about face masks because you must wear face masks on the train, on the ferry, on all public transport, basically. And you see how the face mask has, in the beginning, the, there were a few face masks right at the beginning of COVID. And they're all very, um, you know, just straightforward uh, medical face masks, all that kind of thing. And then I saw one lady with this incredible, just jeweled uh, face mask. It was wild. And now I notice about a third of the face masks are all fashion statements. That's really cool. That's really interesting. Because it's sort of as if, okay, it shows, at least for me, it's, it's a little sign of how easy it is for us to adapt to new conditions. And there's a sort of train of thought that says, well, if we can adapt to new conditions, surely we can adapt to new conditions that, that are actually better for the whole planet and us as well. And, uh, yeah, I know that's a bit preachy, but um, that's my view on the face masks. Let's see what else. It's just been relaxed, you know, nothing special. So it's very calm, not so much boat traffic. Did I see anything interesting? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, a couple of things. I mean, I, did, I yeah, interesting, just things. I saw, I was walking somewhere and I saw this bundle. I thought, what is that? And it turned out to be um, a bundle of human being. It's sort of in this big, sort of. It looked like a, it wasn't a bear skin, but it looked like a bear skin. Uh, sorry, that was a motorcycle, and uh, they were sleeping rough. And then, ah, oh, that's another thing. I'm gonna yes, I'm gonna put the video of this. This was really bizarre. I was sitting on the pier, and I heard this splash. And when I looked, I saw this. Again, I don't know what kind of bird, but it had an eel in its mouth. I thought, what? I got to film this, so I filmed it. So it's not, I couldn't zoom in or anything, but you can, I'm going to put the video and you can see, <laughs> it's really weird. It's fighting this eel and then eventually the bird swallows this eel and that takes ages and ages. So it's like swallowing and swallowing and swallowing. And uh, man, that was so weird. So that that's one of those things that you get by just looking and staring out at the world. So on that very fishy, <laughs> well, it wasn't fishy, very slippery note. I mean, unfortunate for the eel, but uh, the bird's got to eat. Um, yeah, I'm going to say uh, goodbye. As I say goodbye, this big tanker boat called Staatsman is, I don't know why I said it that way, but... <laughs> I feel um, myself slowly losing control, so before that happens, 
Um, I, no, I, I don't think I'm going to do an episode about me being just mad and crazy. <laughs> I, I, and the reason is I'm too chicken to do it. I mean, I, I, I could do it without a microphone. I do that anyways. But, yeah, I don't know how I got... Oh, yeah, I said stats, man, or something like that. Anyway, good. All right, that was that. I am off. And uh, you can listen to the merry sound of motorcycles disappearing into the distance and talk to you soon.